Hey, uh, just a heads up, this isn't really an ASMR video. I'll try to talk softly, but don't expect any tingles. This video is the culmination of a few weeks of work and a few good stories along the way. It all started while I was buying some new cables from my local music store. I had a chance to test out a true binaural microphone, or like a, an ear mic, as they're sometimes called. It was a, an interesting experience, for me at least. It's like you see all these mics all the time in this community, and having one in your hands was kind of cool. But when I looked at the price tag, I was, um, I was quite abruptly brought back to my senses especially considering my channel at the time of making this video brings in zero dollars per month. So it just wasn't an expense I could justify. However, there were several other issues that had me concerned. The raw sound quality from the budget unit was far below what I was expecting from a product like this, and especially at that price point. And even the most expensive version was hardly anything to write home about. In addition to all that, one of the sales representatives mentioned how frequently these items were returned, um, mainly with regards to the build quality around the audio jacks there. Something's not quite right with them. Now, I'm not saying that all binaural microphones are garbage or anything like that. I'm just giving you my limited personal experience and what was told to me by somebody with first-hand knowledge. Uh, regardless, uh, all the options were way out of my budget, and I bought my XLR cables and went home. However, it kind of planted an unorthodox idea in my mind. I have quite a bit of electrical engineering experience, and a good portion of that being in audio. I bet I could build something similar for a fraction of the price, and I could even add some of my own aesthetics to the design. Hence, an idea was born. I gave myself a budget of $400, or a little bit less than half the cost of the uh, standard model binaural mic, and I set about doing research and assembling my parts. For materials, I wanted my mic to look striking and unique, so I settled on a dark slab of walnut for the ear holders and a piece of oak for the body. Both were parts of an offcut. They were kind of expensive, but I did get plenty as I knew I was going to mess something up along the way. Next was sorting out the electronics. My original idea was to purchase base components and build the entire mic from scratch, which I still would love to do in a future video. However, I ended up deciding to purchase pre-made microphones as no matter what I did, they would likely sound better and cost less than anything I could make within my budget. I chose a two-pack of cardioid lavalier microphones from Amazon, looking specifically for uh, a large audio range and a low self-noise. If none of these terms make sense, don't worry about it, I'll get there. The next part was surprisingly difficult. I needed some ears for my mic, specifically silicone ears. These were surprisingly hard to find for a reasonable price, but I settled on a set meant for displaying things like hearing aids or headphones. Problem was, they didn't have a hole all the way through the ear canal, so I would have to punch one myself. And that's basically it. I ordered the pieces, waited for them to arrive, and three weeks later I had everything I needed to get started. Now, the first step was to get the coronavirus, and not wanting to infect my roommates or elderly neighbors, I packed up all of my stuff and drove 45 minutes away to my grandparents' disused farm. Now, before you panic, my grandparents were not there. In fact, they usually spend the bulk of their time 2,000-ish kilometers away and wouldn't be back for at least four months. Plus, my workshop is alright, but nothing compared to my grandfather's. Uh, step two, spend the first two days curled up in a ball under every blanket you can find, watching old sci-fi movies on VHS because there is no internet and I forgot to bring my phone charger. Also, I neglected to bring much food, so if you want the real experience, eat nothing but peanut butter on toast and cans of fruit cocktail for three days. Luckily, my aunt who lives nearby took pity on me and dropped off a bunch of food and a phone charger, but that doesn't have anything to do with building the microphone. Anyway, 
After a few days, I felt better, so I got started. Now, this isn't an excuse, but in my sick stupor, I forgot to hit record on either the microphone or the camera a lot. <laughs> Thinking back on the whole ordeal, I probably should not have been using power tools at all, but I still have all my fingers, so it's all right. With a hole saw, I marked out and then cut two circles out of the walnut and then cleaned them up on the table sander to get rid of the burrs and chips, being careful not to damage their shape. Next, I rounded over the edges with a router, and then with sandpaper on a foam block, I removed the burrs and sharp corners that I just made, and then I set those aside. Um, I settled on a U shape for the main body for a few reasons. I wanted my design to stand out from the sea of rectangles with ears on each side, but also if I wanted, I could place my camera in between the ears to help with realism while I'm recording my videos. You know, so it would look like I'm actually touching your ears. It's a bit weird when you say it, but I suppose that's neither here nor there. Next, I needed a bending form uh, to help me shape the wood into the desired curve. So with an old CD spindle, I traced the contour onto a piece of plywood and then did the same thing about four more times. And then I cut out the pieces with the bandsaw and carefully sanded them to match each other. Once they were stacked and screwed together, I went about fashioning a band to help keep tension on the bundle during bending. So, with a scrap piece of PVC tube, I cut the tube in half, and then using a blowtorch and a vise, I flattened the piece into a strip. Why I did this will become apparent quite soon. So, with the bending jig done, it was time to prep the oak. After cutting a piece of oak to size, I ripped the board into several sheets of veneer, making sure I had plenty of room on all sides to trim it down later. With the largest stainless steel pot I could find, I brought some water to the boil, and then I added a good splash of ammonia. The ammonia helps the steam penetrate into the wood, making it softer and easier to bend. When it was at a hard boil, I simply put the strips in and set a timer for an hour, rotating them every 15 minutes. After the hour, it was time to bend them, so with the jig set up on the floor in the basement near the stove, I got started. Now, you'll have to excuse my attire and pasty legs. I also didn't bring much to wear while I was out there, and it was extremely hot in the house, so I wore swim trunks basically in the entire time. Anyway, the initial bending was done over about 10 minutes, and then left to sit overnight. The next day, I set the pieces outside in the sun to dry. Meanwhile, I covered the jig in painter's tape and prepared to glue the leaves together. This took quite a bit of time and made a fair bit of mess, but overall it went smoothly. Uh, in total, it took about 20 minutes. Two days later, once the glue was dry, it was time to remove the bow from the jig. Now this was quite satisfying, although some of the glue still hadn't dried. Once it was fully dried, the bow was trimmed and it was time to move on to the assembly. I settled on magnets to attach the ear parts to the body of the bow uh, to allow me to adjust the positions of the ears or even detach them depending on the circumstance. With a template cut out of the parts and where the magnets were going to sit, and then with a thin saw blade, I cut the oval holes for the silicone ears and then finished them with sandpaper. Lots of sandpaper, like hours and hours and hours of sandpaper. Next, with uh, other templates, I made and marked um, holes where to install the magnets on both the ears and the bow. To finish the wood, I decided to use natural shellac, partly because it's what I had on hand, but also because I'm fairly comfortable with it. Traditionally, the shellac flakes are grinded thoroughly and then mixed with denatured alcohol to make the coating. However, as I was still a bit sick and not really enjoying the manual labor very much, I just decided it would be okay to leave it be.
After applying approximately 15 thin coats, the gloss was about where I wanted it, although it might be a bit too glossy now, so in the future I might dull it down a little bit so it looks better on camera. The next step was to punch a hole in the ears to have a place to put the microphone. Without a large enough punch on hand, I was forced to make one. So, using a small piece of copper pipe that I straightened as best I could with the vise, and then using several tools in the incorrect way, uh, I eventually came up with a piece of copper tubing that had been flared a little bit and sharpened on the inside. So, back inside, with some soap as lubricant, I just punched the holes right all the way through the ears. It went surprisingly smoothly. All that was left was the final assembly. With a microphone mount I salvaged from a broken shock mount and some screws, I attached the mounting hardware to the bottom of the bow, and then went about unpacking the lavalier microphones from their packages and stuffing them into the ears. I wanted a tighter fit, but probably could have given it a bit more space. I attached the mount to a mic stand, snapped on the ear modules, and that's it. So, how does it sound? Not too bad. The lavalier mics I chose were a good balance of price to low noise, however, they were slightly lacking on the bass department, which is not surprising considering their size. The moment of truth. How much did it cost? Not including the two weeks of labor, the total parts came up to $213 Canadian, with all numbers rounded up to the nearest dollar. Needless to say, I am quite pleased with the outcome less than a quarter of the cost of a professional version, and with nearly infinite flexibility. Now, it's definitely not perfect. There are some things I would improve in the future, namely um, some sort of shock mitigation, perhaps make the center bar a bit thicker and then hide the wires from the microphones in them. And I still do want to build something similar, but fully from scratch and use large diaphragm proper microphone capsules to capture more bass tones. But all in all, I am extremely satisfied with how this turned out, and I cannot wait to use them in the future. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. If you're curious how the mic sounds in a more um, full-length video, you can check out the previous video I made, which I'll have linked in the description. Um, this channel has grown so much from last year, and it's people like you who continue to inspire me to do crazy things like making microphones and writing videos. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much, and I will see you in the next video.